A young woman who lost a dear friend has been campaigning along with others to make a California landmark safer. John Blackstone has her story. Will you hold me? On a stage in Nashville, singer-songwriter Sarah Lockwood Barr performs songs she's written that she loves to sing. Will you like me when this oh, oh, oh. And one that breaks her heart. So this is for Casey Brooks, who would have turned 27 this past May. What do you say in your song about Casey? What do you say? All the world's gone to sleep tonight, but you won't wake. All the world cries for you tonight, but you can't see. She and Casey grew up, she says, in a comfortable California town just north of San Francisco. We learned to ride bikes together. Senior year of high school was almost over. They were ready to go off to college. So what happened? A couple months from graduating. January 2008. Uh, Casey jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge and ended her life. And you had no idea? Nobody that's... did. She was already accepted into college. She was a really talented writer. She had a good crew of friends. There was no, there was no reason, as far as we could tell. And it was really easy for her. There's a parking lot right at the base of the bridge. The guardrail is only four feet high. So you can just kind of pretend you're walking across the bridge and hop over and it's a 220 foot fall and that's it. Casey's parents, John and Erica Brooks. I mean, every time we drive over the bridge, every time we look at the people laughing and, and, and smiling and taking selfies of themselves and enjoying this, that's what we used to do. And then, you know, Casey jumped and it all changed. The beautiful landmark at the entrance to San Francisco Bay has an ugly side. Casey Brooks is one of nearly 1,700 suicides on the bridge since its opening in 1937. In 2016, 39 people jumped from the bridge, but that toll may be coming to an end. So I really hope that the board puts safety ahead of inconvenience. For years, Casey's parents and Sarah Lockwood Barr have been striving with others who lost loved ones on the bridge to convince the bridge board to erect a net, a suicide barrier. But a barrier on there, you say, would, would tell people someone cares. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. We care enough about you so that when you're not looking out for yourself, we're letting you know we care. That is certainly not the only place, by any means, that people can end their lives. How would a net change things? What we've learned about suicide is that, uh, in a lot of cases, it can be very impulsive. If you are prevented from acting on that impulse, the chances are very, very good that you won't have a recurrence. I walked back toward the traffic railing. I ran forward, and I catapulted myself over the rail. Kevin Hines is one of the few who jumped Single. and survived. He's also a strong advocate for a net to prevent others from making the same bad decision. When did you realize it was a mistake? The millisecond jump? my hands left the rail and I was in free fall, which I thought was too late. A study in 1978 of 515 people who attempted suicide on the Golden Gate Bridge but were stopped found that 90% did not die from suicide later. But for years, that wasn't enough to convince officials the bridge should get a net. There were people who believed that this bridge cannot be touched. It's an iconic structure. It's sort of like the Mona Lisa. You can't touch the Mona Lisa. So there was the aesthetics issue. There are still people who are going to say millions and millions of dollars, and it will ruin an icon. How much money would you pay for your child? What's the price tag on your husband or wife? In the nearly 10 years since she joined the campaign to build a net, Sarah Lockwood Barr has gone through times of hope and disappointment. We had all these sort of fake outs. Something would pass and then a budget would come about and then it would get pulled because there was a new estimate on cost and then someone else would come in with an appeal. And 
you know, I kind of lost hope at a point. Like, it, it just started feeling like a slap in the face every time, you know, we'd get really excited something was happening. Your grief. Last spring, their decade of persistence finally paid off. The long struggle for Annette ended with a ceremony at the bridge, marking approval of plans for a $200 million suicide barrier due for completion in 2021. It'll be so healing because it also sends a statement to the community and to the world that life is valuable and life matters. This is us saying, we value your life and your struggle. Time is everything.